Frodo bent his head. And what do you wish, she said at last. That what should be, shall be, she answered. The love of the elves for their land and their works is deeper than the deeps of the sea, and their regret is undying and cannot ever wholly be assuaged. Yet they will cast all away rather than submit to Sauron, for they know him now. For the fate of Lothlorien you are not answerable, but only for the doing of your own task. Yet I could wish, were it of any avail, that the One Ring had never been wrought, or had remained forever lost. My Golvanin friends, Yoiston here, and I hope you all are doing well, wherever you are in Middle-earth. Today we will be finishing up our What's Different series as it pertains to the Fellowship of the Ring book and movie. This series aims to take a look at the major differences between the books and movies, as well as some of the things that the movies cut out from the books. I'll link the last and first parts of this series, as well as some other related videos in the description and cards above, so please check those out if you are not caught up or want more information. Now, let's pick up where we left off in the last episode. In the movies, the Fellowship was greatly saddened by the passing of Gandalf into the depths of Khazad-dûm, but Aragorn pushed the company forward, and they came into the woods of Lothlorien, finding the elves of Haldir. Aragorn would thus convince Haldir and his elves to allow the Fellowship to go deeper into the forest. Then they would meet with Celeborn and Galadriel. In the books, the end result would be the same, but as always there is far more detail and culture involved. The Fellowship, and specifically Aragorn, bade farewell to Gandalf, as Aragorn recalled his warning to Gandalf about passing into Moria. Some of the members would also acknowledge more about the landscape than is done in the movies. And as the Fellowship headed eastwards towards Lothlorien, Gimli bade Frodo to come with him to see Keled Zarum, or Lake Miromir. Sam came with them, and they saw the lake that reflected the stars of the heavens at all times of day and night and they too saw the pillar that marked the spot at which Durin I had originally peered into the water. They looked into the lake, and Gimli said farewell to it, and the three rejoined the company. They went on for a time, until the wounds that Frodo and Sam had sustained in Moria at the hands of the orcs made the company rest, as Aragorn examined and healed the wounds. This is when the Fellowship would see the mithril coat of Bilbo upon Frodo, and they marveled at it. After eating, the company continued, and Frodo and Gimli took the rear guard. Frodo would see the two eyes of Gollum behind them, before the creature slipped away. Ere the company entered the Golden Wood, Boromir wished for another path they might take, for he heard fell stories of Lothlorien, which Aragorn quickly dismissed. The company came to the river Nimrodel, and after the company was somewhat healed and refreshed by its waters and crossed them, Legolas sang and told the tale of Nimrodel and her love Amroth. After the tale, the company would seek shelter among the trees, only to find the elves of that land, who had been aware of them for some time. They would speak to Frodo, Sam, and Legolas, and eventually the company would come up upon the trees to rest for the night. Orcs would attack the bounds, but they were quickly apprehended by the elves, and Gollum would come near Frodo and his tree, but would flee, and Haldir wondered at him. In the morning, the company would make their way towards the heart of Lothlorien, but Gimli alone was supposed to be blindfolded, which he took a great disliking to. So Aragorn had the elves blindfold the entire company, and they made their way towards the heart of Lothlorien until they received word that Galadriel knew who they were, possibly from new messages from Rivendell, and the blindfolds were all removed. Thus they were welcomed to Kirin Amroth and felt as though they walked in the Elder Days. Aragorn was lost in a memory, for he had been betrothed to Arwen upon Kirin Amroth, and then with a smile he took Frodo and left that place. Going back to the movie, the company would meet Celeborn and Galadriel, and the lady would appeal to many of them and strike fear into the heart of Boromir. Then the company would rest, listening to the elves lament Gandalf, and Sam would try to make a poem himself about Gandalf, before Aragorn and Boromir spoke of the glory of Gondor. This moment between Boromir and Aragorn is only in the film. Then Galadriel would awaken Frodo, who would follow her into her garden and look into her mirror. He would offer her the ring, and she would refuse, passing the test and encouraging Frodo to go forward on his venture. In the book, the company would go to Caris Galathon and meet Celeborn and Galadriel, and there was more dialogue here than in the movie, but ultimately the road of the Fellowship was recounted, as was the fall of Gandalf and then Galadriel peered into the minds of the company, after which they partially discussed, and it seemed to them as if she offered what they most wanted as a test. Then the company went to sleep, except for Legolas who spent time amongst his kin, and often brought Gimli with him during their stay in Lorien. As the elves lamented Gandalf, Frodo made verses about his wizard friend, and Sam joined in with his verse about fireworks. After they spoke of Bilbo, elves, and other things, Galadriel beckoned to them both, and the two hobbits who would eventually be alone on the quest of the ring went with her to her garden and mirror. 
Sam would look inside and see, from what I would estimate, Frodo and Shelob's lair, as Sam looked to save the ring, and then I think he saw himself coming up the pass of Kirithungal, or something around that point in the tale. Sam then saw the scouring of the Shire and his gaffer being forced out of his home. After he was released from the Mirror's spell, he wished to go home, but then the words of Galadriel reminded him that he actually wished to stay with Frodo until the end of the road. Then Frodo peered into the mirror, and from what I can tell, he saw Gandalf the White, or quite possibly Saruman. And then I think he saw the downfall of Numenor, Osgiliath and Menas Tirith, Aragorn's captured corsair ship with a banner of a white tree upon it during the Battle of the Pelennor Fields, and a ship sailing into the mist, quite possibly the same ship he would take into the west. And then he saw the Eye of Sauron, and the ring grew heavy but did not touch the water as he pulled back. These are the visions I believe they saw based on my reading, but they are described far more enigmatically in the book. Galadriel explained that she knows what Frodo saw, for she has also seen it. She showed him Nenya, the Ring of Adamant, and Frodo offered her the One Ring, and afterwards Sam agreed with this, knowing that she would do righteous things for the world. But she knew that she would turn terrible, and spoke of the queen she would be, until rejecting the ring and passing the test. Then she told Frodo that the One Ring may be made to dominate the other rings if the wearer is powerful enough, as Frodo could not do so without the effort destroying him. But Frodo already had a better and more keen sight, as he knew Gladriel had desired the ring, and he could see Nenya, whereas Sam only saw a star between the lady's fingers. Moving on with the movie, we have the Fellowship receive gifts from the Galathrium and leave upon the Anduin after we get a scene where the hobbits eat some Nimbus bread. We then have some conflict between Bormir and Aragorn about going to Menas Tirith after they speak of Gollum following them down the Anduin, and Sam worries for Frodo after asking him to eat. Then the group sees the Argonoth and makes camp along the western shore of Nen Hithuel. The group discusses their course a bit, and Frodo wanders off into the woods. Bormir comes upon him and declines into madness, trying to take the ring from him until Frodo puts it on and leaves. Then after realizing that Frodo and Bormir have gone, the rest of the company begins looking for them. Aragorn finds Frodo after Frodo takes off the ring upon a Munhen, and the two realize that the company has broken, and Frodo must go on alone. Then the Urukai, who have been bred by Saruman throughout the film, and have been sent along after the Fellowship and the Ring arrive, and the Battle of Amonhen ensues. Ormir is killed defending Merry and Pippin, who are thus taken, and Aragorn kills Lurtz, who led the company and who had shot Ormir. Sam finds Frodo crossing the lake and comes after him. After reuniting, the two set off on their journey alone towards Mordor, and after Boromir left these shores of the world, his body was sent over the falls of Rauros on a boat. Then Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli set off after the captured hobbits Merry and Pippin. The film ends with Frodo and Sam looking towards Mordor over the Immin Wheel. Looking once more at the books, these events are similar but happen over three chapters with much more detail added in. Gimli eats the Lembus instead of the hobbits in the book. The company is gifted cloaks and ropes from the Galathrium and Galadriel arrives upon the shores of the Anduin singing a song of Lorien and Eldamar. There is a feast of parting that is held, and Galadriel gives gifts to the Fellowship, such as her three hairs to Gimli, a golden belt to Boromir, the Elisar stone to Aragorn, and a box of soil with a Malarn tree nut from Lothlorien to Sam, as well as some other gifts for the other members of the company. I should also mention that Galadriel gives a sheath to Aragorn, specially made for Andriel with an enchantment upon it, stating that the sword drawn from it shall not be stained nor broken in defeat. But Aragorn does not receive a knife like he does in the movie. Then Galadriel sings Galadriel's Lament, Nemarie, a song completely in Elvish. And then the Fellowship left Lothlorien. Sam, Frodo, and Aragorn spoke of Gollum who followed them upon the boats and the company followed Aragorn's lead down the river Anduin, commenting on what they saw, such as the Brownlands. They would evade the arrows of the orcs from the east shore, and Legolas would shoot down a fell beast with a Nazgul upon it, with the bow he was gifted from Galadriel. Then they would pass the Argonoth, heading southwards. However, the company decided that when they reached near the falls of Rauros and Amonhen, they would decide their next course. Then resting upon the lawn of Parth Galen, they would come to decide whether their course led to Menas Tirith, or eastward, or if they would be forced to split the company. Frodo took a walk for an hour to clear his mind, but Bormir secretly pursued him, and they spoke. Slowly the man came into madness, and to escape him and his pursuit of the ring, Frodo put the ring on and sat upon the seat atop a manhen, and his sight grew long and he saw the dangers that had come to many lands, and he saw too the peoples and fortresses of different places. But eventually he would struggle against the eye of the enemy, and a voice would struggle back, telling him to take off the ring. 
We come to find out in the Two Towers that this voice was the voice of Gandalf. Then Frodo took off the ring and decided his next course. He would go alone to Mordor, thus he put the ring on and headed for the boats. At the same time, the company spoke of the possibilities of the future. Aragorn suggested that he, Gimli, and Sam would go east with Frodo, while Merry, Pippin, Legolas, and Bormir went to the White City to help fight against Sauron. But Merry and Pippin had issue with this, and eventually the company discovered that Bormir was missing as well. Bormir returned to them soon after, and told some of what had happened. He said he urged Frodo to go to Minas Tirith and grew angry, and the hobbit put on the ring and disappeared. Then the company took off in different directions, looking for Frodo. Aragorn, who was not pleased with Boromir, told the man to guard Merry and Pippin at least, and Aragorn would then go to Amonhen to see if he could find Frodo. He called Sam along, but the hobbit was not as fast as the ranger, and then he used his plain hobbit sense. By knowing how people acted and what their goals and drives were, Sam figured out that Frodo must have gone back to the boats. Thus he went too, and he found a boat going into the water all by itself. Sam jumped at the boat and missed, plunging into the water. Frodo helped Sam from the water, brought the boat back to shore, and took off the ring. After some arguing, Sam told Frodo that they would both go to Mordor, or they both would not go. And so Frodo relented, and Sam grabbed his belongings, and the two left upon a boat, going to the eastern shore where they would hide the boat and continue on foot towards Mordor. And that brings us to the end of the Fellowship of the Ring book, as the Battle of Amonhen takes place at the beginning of the next novel. From this part of the Fellowship of the Ring, we see that sometimes one's plans do not always come to fruition, but through friendship and loyalty, new plans might be made to drive one to their destiny. Thank you all so much for watching, I hope you all enjoyed our last episode of our What's Different series as it relates to the Fellowship of the Ring. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and share this with a friend. Please let me know any thoughts, questions, corrections, and especially additions in the comments below, for there are certainly other smaller differences not noted here. This part of the Fellowship of the Ring novel has many interesting pieces to it, and it adds far more world building to the story, so check it out if you haven't already. I'm very excited to get into what's different between the Two Towers book and movie in a future installment of this series. Also, please check out our music channel, Facebook, Twitter, Merch, and Patreon for our Discord server and podcast in the description below. Finally, don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to join the Men of the West and all of the free peoples today, and I'll see you all again next week with a remake and updated version of my Dragons of Middle-Earth video. As always, thank you all so much for watching and for joining me on this adventure. Until the next one, my great friends.